Okay, so this video is going to cover the determination of perfect competition and um, the short run equilibrium and perfect competition. When we're graphing uh, perfect competition, we're going to use two graphs, one for the firm and one for the industry. And I was drawn up here to start. On the industry diagram, we're going to draw the market demand curve. On the firm diagram, we're going to have the firm's cost curves. And the, the two curves we'll need will be the short run average cost curve and the uh, marginal cost curve. We really won't make a, I don't like to make a big difference about the uh, short run versus the long run cost curve. So I'm calling these short run cost curves here. We're really not going to change those when we go from the short run to the long run. Uh, on the vertical axis, we have dollars per unit, so we can have the price or uh, cost on the uh, vertical axis. Both of the quantity axes are in quantities. Um, I put a smaller number here just because this would be one firm. We might be thinking about like 50 firms in perfect competition. And so these would be much smaller quantities than the uh, quantity we have over here. But they are the same, uh, the same numbers, the same units. So we could go from one diagram to the next in terms of the quantities. The vertical axes are the same units, so we can just take a, a number or a price from one diagram directly over to the other. So we've got these two uh, diagrams here, and uh, this is where we would start. And what we would have is in the short run, um, as explained in the PowerPoint, is in the short run there's going to be a fixed number of firms in the industry. That sort of follows from the fact that there is a um, capital is fixed in the short run. If a firm that isn't in the industry um, would have to come in and like say uh, build or open up a factory. If a firm that's currently in the industry cannot expand their factory or change their capital in the short run, then it would be inconsistent for us to say that, oh, a firm that's not in the industry could go from having no capital to say having a, a, a factory in the short run. So just to be consistent here, we would have to say the number of firms in the industry would be fixed. The short run marginal cost curve, you know, is the supply curve for the ind for the individual firm. With a fixed number of firms in the industry, then we can sum up these supply curves of the individual firm. We can sum them horizontally, meaning that at any given price, the quantity that one firm would supply, well, we simply add that up over the 50, 100, however many firms there happen to be in the industry, and that would give us the industry supply curve. So we could come over here and to the uh, industry diagram and draw in a industry supply curve. And I'll, I'll draw a blue here. And I just like to label this saying a summation of the marginal cost. That sigma is a uh, mathematical notation for a summation. Just to remind us where this is coming from. And with a fixed number of firms in the industry, we're summing up over a fixed number of, you know, we have a fixed uh, number here in this summation. So that allows us to place the industry supply curve uh, precisely. Now, short run equilibrium is determined here in the industry diagram. It's just the intersection of supply and demand. So in, in some sense, that's like we've uh, seen all along, we're going back to principles in uh, the model of supply and demand. We just find where the price, where quantity supplied is going to equal quantity demanded, or the market would clear. And we'll call that PSR. And then that's also going to give us here the uh, quantity for the industry in the <coughs> short run. So that's the, uh, in terms of the aggregate for the industry here, that's our short run equilibrium. Now we have to get the uh, firm's behavior in this. And in fact, we sort of already know it because this is their supply curve, and, and but we have to, we want to draw it here on this side diagram. So what we would do is we know that in perfect competition, a firm is a price taker. They will take this price set in the market as given. So we can come over here to this same number, because remember, we're on these vertical axes, you can go from one to the other, they're the same. Uh, in effect, they're measuring the same thing here. So if we can come over here, I'll just try to be pretty close here. SPSR, that's that same price that we got over here on in the industry diagram. And now what we'll do is draw in that horizontal 
demand curve for the firm because the firm's a price taker. They take this price as given. Their, their marginal revenue curve is horizontal and right there. Every firm to maximize profit always is going to set marginal cost equal to marginal revenue. That will occur on this diagram here at this point. And so this is the quantity that the individual firm is going to be supplying. We sum this up over all the 50 or 100 firms in the industry, and then we get this quantity over here. So, in effect, these numbers have to be consistent because we can, you know, we, we constructed this from this for the given number of firms in the industry. Um, if you want to, one way we can think about this is with this uh, firm diagram is to think that every firm's identical, and th there's one reason for uh, doing that is, I mean, if all, all the firms have access to the same technology then they, they should be able to, you know, have the same possibilities for producing. So, uh, you know, we could think of this, we have a whole bunch of firms in the industry and they happen to all be exactly like this one here. Or we could think of this as a representative firm. But in any event, now, we know the uh, price in the industry, we know the quantity that will be uh, supplied in the industry, and that's also the quantity that consumers demand. So we have the market clearing here, and now we know the quantity that each firm would produce. There's one more thing we want to do, and that is to figure out uh, whether the firm is making a profit or a loss. Well, as I've said before, you, you need to be able to look at a cost curve, the cost curves for a firm, and be able to see the profit. And remember that to see that, remember that profit can be equal, that can be written as Price minus quantity times <laughs> price minus average cost times the quantity. The profit per unit times the number of units. And so that's a rectangle. So we know the firm's going to produce this much output in the short run. We sell it at this price. We need to take the uh, cost per unit at this point. So at, at QSR, we project up to where we intersect the um, average cost curve, and that gives us the cost per unit. Now, this Q here is just a little bit to the right of where the marginal cost curve intersects the average cost curve. So this quantity, this, this amount here, is just a little bit above the uh, minimum of this uh, U-shaped average, average cost curve. So it's, it, it's not quite, it's a little bit higher, but this would be our cost. And I'll just uh, call that C here. And uh, therefore, we'd have this area here as profits. And, and it would be a profit because price is greater than average cost. So, a, so when you take this subtraction here, whatever this number is, subtract this from it, we've got a positive number. So that's positive. So this would be profits. And that's it. That's the uh, equilibrium in the short run. Now, one thing to note is that in the equilibrium in the short run, a firm could be making losses. The way I've drawn it here, the firm is making a, a profit. If there happen to be more firms in the industry, then the, the firms in the, the typical firms in the uh, industry could be making a loss. Now, to see this, to see what we already have there, if we had more firms in the industry, we'd be summing up over more firms, maybe 150 firms instead of 100 firms. So when we summed up the marginal cost curves for each of the individual firms, we would get something that would like farther to the right here. If you had an industry supply curve on this diagram that happened to be out here, then we could see that the price that we would be at would be a little bit lower here. And when we projected that price over to the uh, firm diagram, we see that we would be below the average cost curve. So at a price like this, the typical firm would be making a loss. So what we can see is that depending on the number of firms in the industry, in the short run equilibrium, the typical firm could either be making a profit or economic profit or an economic loss. 
But this is, this, there's a short run equilibrium. We have a balance here. And again, remember, short run equilibrium, when we look at the industry diagram, industry, the, uh, the, the price that clears the market, the price at which the quantity demanded equals the quantity supply, given our fixed number of firms in the industry, that is the short run equilibrium price. And then we just come over here to the firm diagram to complete uh, the, the analysis here by figuring out the profit maximizing quantity for the individual firm and whether they're making a profit or loss. So there you have it. That's a short run uh, equal determination of short run equilibrium in perfect competition.